Number two, when you look at the cross, it also is a symbol of victory. Because again, though he suffered, through his suffering, he gave to many victory who will receive what he did. Yeah. Notice again in Matthew, the 27th chapter, that these Jewish leaders set out to destroy Jesus because of envy. They envied the power and the fame that he had begun to receive from many folk. And Pilate recognized in Jesus that this man is not worthy of death. He is not even worthy of punishment because after, after having examined him, I find no fault with him. And so he asked him, what evil has he done? What evil has he done that he is deserving to die the way y'all want him to die? And the answer was simple, which was he has done nothing. But for the sake of God desiring to reconcile his people back to him, his only son has to take upon him the sin of the whole world. And he who knew no sin had to become sin that the sin penalty of hell might be lifted up off of our heads. And when I consider that, it provokes me to be more loyal to Christ. When I consider that, it promotes me to be more dedicated to the one that laid down his life that I could have a much, much, much better life. But in our day and time, so-called Christians are allowing their love to wax cold. And in our day and time, people are not dedicated to the faith the way that they need to be. And they don't take certain things serious. And, and because of that, you see a drifting away taking place within the church. Oh, I know what you're saying, Pastor. There are more folk that go to church now than ever. Yeah, but they don't really know God. They don't really understand the price that was paid on Calvary's cross the way they need to because if many of us really knew it the way we need it we would put God first and we wouldn't have no problem with anybody that didn't want us to have him first and there are too many of us that do not put him first even this week instead of your mind being upon him you got your mind on carnal things This is stuff we need to know. And in our day and time, in the modern day church, they trying to water all this stuff down. I said they watering it down real good. But see, that's the reason I'm telling y'all, what's coming upon this world, you're going to have to know your faith. You're going to have to know the word. See, I said something then. Because there are things that's coming upon this world in order to deceive people of God in order to move them off of the word of God and into carnality. And, and, and if you have any spiritual discernment at all, you can see what's taking place in this world. You can see that darkness is, is, is filling the world while the truth of what Jesus did is being watered down. being watered down to where folk coming into church claiming to be saved but don't even recognize that it's only through his blood that you washed of your sins. This reason is necessary to preach about the cross, the crucifixion because without it, man cannot be saved. 
Without it, man cannot be redeemed. You cannot be bought back unless you recognize the price that was paid in order to buy you back. And the devil don't mind you coming to church as long as you don't get serious. He don't mind you clapping a little bit as long as you don't really sell out to Jesus. Because when you sell out to him, you become a bona fide witness of him in the earth realm that he did live, he did die, but he yet got up and he lived through bona fide witnesses. That's the reason the devil trying to shut folks up. And that's the reason again I say to you, Christianity is being attacked the way it is. You have to know why you believe what you believe. You can't allow nothing you see on the internet or something somebody says to you to cause you to sway from the truth of God's word and to say things like Jesus was just a man. He never resurrected. He never rose again. This is serious. The Christian faith hinges upon his death as well as his resurrection. Because his death was prophesied through the prophets that one was coming. Not just anyone, but the son of God would lay down his life. He would become the sacrificial lamb. He would become the one without blemish. He would be the one that would take away the sin of the entire world. Because only him, he was the only one sinless. And see, the offering had to be without spot. It had to be without blemish. And we have to understand that. No matter how many crazy movies you see, Jesus never sinned. Jesus was never married. He never had a child. He was the son of God, pure and holy. Anything else is blasphemy. That's when you got to be careful. You can't let certain things get in your spirit. In reference to your savior. Or it will disrupt your walk with God. And it'll have you wondering about him. Like some of you are tonight. The reason God got me preaching this so strong. We, we look on TV and see things. I, I very rarely will ever look at a biblical movie on TV. Simply because they're going to change everything. They're going to make it politically correct. Because the one thing they don't want nothing to do with is Jesus. And the reason America is walking up under a curse and the reason her enemies are yet defeating her tonight and are going to defeat her in the future is because she has abandoned Jesus. She has abandoned Yeshua. She has abandoned the Savior. We have turned our back on God for what is politically correct. We have abandoned his law and brought in man's laws. And the curse is in effect. The persecution that you see overseas is moving this way. And many are not going to be able to stand when things get tough. Because when it get tough, the only way to stand, you have to know within yourself that I'm standing on truth no matter what I hear. I believe false evidence is about to be presented to the church to sway some. Just to move them. Just to move them. Galatians 3 and 13. Notice it. Christ has redeemed us. Not good works, but Christ. Not getting up trying to be the best person you can be. And because of that, you're redeemed. No, Christ has redeemed us. So if I remove Christ, I have no redemption. Why? Because Christ has redeemed us. Christ has brought us back. Watch. From the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. 
See, when they hung him on that tree, he became a curse. Watch this. So that you and I could be blessed. Imagine that. He became a curse. The one Pilate said did no evil. The one he said he could find no fault in. Yet this one became a curse. So that you could walk in blessings and liberty. Notice how he said that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. That we might receive the promise of the spirit through what? Faith. See, we receive the promise of the spirit through what? Faith. And when Jesus died, he told the disciple, it is expedient that I die and go away that the comforter, the Holy Spirit, he'll come. He'll abide with you. He'll be with you. He'll teach you. He'll bring things to your remember. He'll lead and guide you into all truth. But if I don't die and get up and ascend to the Father, you can't receive him. I am not going to mock the death of Jesus by saying I accept it, but yet I'm living contrary to it. I'm not going to do I'm not going to play with God like that. If he redeemed me, then I know he brought me back to give me power to live a life that without his death, I could otherwise never be able to live. So I'm not going to play with this thing. I'm going to be serious about this. If there's one thing in your life you need to be serious about, it is your walk with God. And recognize that the closer you walk with God, the farther you get away from certain folk. But the problem with a lot of you, you trying to walk with God and please people at the same time. But you should be concerned about pleasing the one that died for you because nobody else died for you. Some of you got your hands up now, but you, but you throw God on the back burner in a minute. 